Awesome. There we go. Hey, Bernadette, do you know if Tony's going to sign on? I think she will. She has a prior engagement, so she's hoping to sign on. Okay, all right. Okay. So let's start here. Okay, so my hope is this can be sort of a workshop slash conversation and um, maybe the start of a me help me helping and whatever I can do to help all of you as much as possible. So um, by before we're finished, I will uh, give you my contact info and all that kind of stuff in any way that I can help. And obviously, Philippe has that as well. Um, but the idea for tonight is to essentially create a marketing plan. Now, before we start, so I understand like what's going on and you can understand where I'm coming from. Maybe we should like, do some intros or something. Sure. Oh, do you want to start? <laughs> uh, my name's Penny Menner, Penelope. Um, Turtle Clan. I'm from Allegheny here, okay. Salt Lake area. Um, I'm a traditional basket maker and a corn husk doll maker. So um, trying to work, trying to stay true to our tradition. So baskets from the black ash and then corn husk from like the white corn. And um, I'm educated in communications and graphic design. Okay. So you'll probably know a lot of what we're talking about. Yeah, the beginning of it. Yeah. I didn't specialize in marketing, but. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. I can't wait to see your stuff, all of everybody's. Oh, good. <laughs> hey, I'm Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody except for you, but I know you. Um, I uh, work for Southern Tier West. I help develop and like get the grant that's um, funding the program. And yeah, I'm an artist as well. Um, and I know Tom and from the Innovation Center and I got him my book out. So good, great. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Leora White. I am Turtle Clan. I'm from here, Allegheny Territory. I um, graduated from Jamestown Business School College with my associates in business marketing and management. And I am a stay at home mom now, and I'm just working on my art. <laughs> I like to do beadwork and draw and paint. And yeah, just I, my hope is to inspire everyone in the community to be an artist as well and to create. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, my name is Samantha Jacobs. I am a Seneca member from the Cattaraugus Reservation. I am a community educator with the um, Seneca Language and Cultural Center over at the Sally Huff. I do community classes to teach and I do a lot of research into our traditional Haudenosaunee art forms. I do a lot of beadwork. Um, I work with hair, like caribou and moose. I uh, do tufting and embroidery. I do a little bit of painting, um, most well known for my moccasins and bags. Uh, I've been set up doing the vendor thing part of artistry for the past, I don't know, six or so years, seven years maybe. Um, I go with my mother to some uh, jury art shows, um, some exhibits, vendor events. Um, the big one over in Santa Fe for the Indian market is probably our best one for collectors and stuff like that. I have some pieces in some museums private collections, so I'm always looking for, you know, the network to get some of my pieces out there. Excellent. Yeah. Do we have more people? No, I just went for Bernadette. <laughs> Bernadette, why don't you go and then I'll go. How's that sound? Oh, okay. Hello. Um, now I scan Guigo My name is Bernadette. Um, I'm Deer Clan from the Cataraugus Territory. Uh, last August, I just uh, received my master's in American studies, and I plan on uh, pursuing my PhD in American studies. 
um, because UB has an ex uh, expanded their Indigenous Studies program, and I um, I plan on being a part of that. Um, my family and I are the Iroquois doll makers, and we've been going all throughout Tur Turtle Island, demonstrating, doing workshops um, with our cornhouse dolls. And I, uh, my my specialty is actually cornhouse or cornhouse um, moccasins that I make, but um, I dabble in a few other things as well. Um, and our our family has been, um, you know, that's that who that's who has been inspiring me is my family. And I do have an extensive marketing background. I was the marketing manager for our Seneca Gaming um, entity for you know eight plus years, and then previously in in the '90s. And um, yeah, that's about it for right now. Excellent. So you can teach our class tonight, Bernadette. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Yeah, we're just perfect timing. We're just introducing ourselves. Do you want to go first? Sure. All right. Oh, uh, what do you want to know? I'm Alicia Panford. All right. And what? Uh, tell us more about what you, about your your. So art. I do lead work. I don't do it to like make money. Okay. I just do it as a hobby. Um, I've been doing it for a very long time. I think I started when I was like twelve. Awesome. I have, so. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm Olivia. I'm, um, I do lead work. Um, most of the time, it's to make profit. Um, Certain times, like when I was in school, that's how I paid for food and gas to get home and all that. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, so my name is Tom Cullen, and I'm the director for the Innovation Center at St. Bonaventure, which is a center that we started about two years ago. And the um, our mission is to help grow purpose-driven innovators. Um, I am an entrepreneur myself and grew up in the village of Cataraugus, so not far from here, and lived in Chicago for 18 years and moved back four years ago. And essentially my job is to help people grow whatever they're working on. And so the point of today, and I think wife believe wanted me to come in was to you know, talk with everyone and just help however I can with um, wherever you guys want to take uh, what you're doing. Um, so we have, a, I have like a couple thoughts on creating a marketing plan today. I think that some people here are, you know, thinking about that more than others, obviously. Like, and so we can my thought is we'd make this, I have a couple slides just to tell you how I think about it. And then we can talk through it, answer any questions, just have a good conversation is my hope. And then my hope is that then we can take some time to write down um, our own marketing plan, however you want to, you want to do that. Um, and we can help each other out and then um, maybe come back another time. I have students that can help us as well, depending on what comes out of it. And that could be, you know, longer term and stuff like that. And so it's just, we'll see where this goes, I guess. <laughs> Does that, that sound good? Yeah. Awesome. So I guess before we start, just, so I guess we can just kind of shout out. Do people have, um, how do you, think about marketing now or, or getting the word out about what you're doing or sell, selling or, or anything like that? Mine is word of mouth. Word like of I mouth. Yeah, I don't advertise because I don't usually do orders. Most of the things I do is for like family. Yeah. And that's why I said I don't do it for profit. I do um, work at the Erie County Fair every year and we sell earrings, like simple things, but 
I just said I just do it for like this was made for my cousin's graduation. Yeah. And I didn't charge. I just did it out of love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Is it a like a bag? Or it's his like reach box. Reach box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, it's really nice. I didn't do the sewing either. I did the, the beadwork. The beadwork. Nice. Okay. Very nice. And the floor work. Yes, I did that too. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. I use social media a lot. Yeah. Uh, business cards, <laughs> networking, different uh, events like at uh, art shows or something. Yeah. And then people who know that I do a lot of research will reach out to me like, hey, can you come to go to this or whatever? Yeah. Um, word of mouth also, so. So what social media platforms? Uh, mostly uh, Instagram or Facebook. Okay. I do have TikTok, but I don't really use it. Yeah. Not for I this. Can't, I can't do it. <laughs> 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 what about Twitter? Uh, that's more of a personal and not necessarily this. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody else use social media? Yeah. I'm Instagram too. I just got on it though. <laughs> so I, I actually like if it's a one of a kind, I usually mine are not for sale either. <laughs> so my dolls are though. So huh? with Tony and Bernadette, um, um, we do the same thing. So um, crossover a little bit, but they tell stories too. So what do you mean when they tell stories um don't you tell stories when you um have your um interaction with the public bernadette oh yeah yeah we um we you know talk about you know the um our version of the um no face cornhouse doll and we just talk about you know where our family's been and what we've done in the past um so that you know intertwines with you know what we do um the only social media that i use is maybe facebook and that's just just putting pictures out there saying oh look where i've been you know something like that but my goal is to actually um i mean i like i said i have a marketing background and i understand marketing plans but my goal is actually to uh my sister and i want to collaborate and uh, develop our own website so people can go to that website and to um you know, see where we're going to go, where we have been, and just, you know, just the history of the Iroquois doll makers, and just to brand that name, actually. Does anybody have a website now? I do. You do? Yeah. And what's on your website? Mostly do a blog. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I just talk about where I've been or where I'm going. Um, and what I'm working on. So what shows and stuff that you're yeah, going to? Yeah, if I, if I have any lined up or whatever. It's kind of like announcing where I'm gonna go. So really hasn't been anywhere lately because of the COVID. <laughs> so. Does it, what do you, would it make sense to sell on the website? Um, no, because it's almost like that. It's like a one of a kind type of a thing. So mm -hmm. it's kind of specialized, I guess, in a way. And it takes how long? I mean, like Sam's hat right there. How long did it take you to do? I don't know. A while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard to have a time and even a price on something sometimes. That's where I'm like learning since I'm like trying to find my rhythm right now is like how long it takes me to make something and like how much to sell it for for my time. That's what a lot of partners struggle with. Like I visit the high school a lot. I visit the art room a lot. And even now, sometimes I ask her, I'm like, what do I charge for this? And she's like, I don't know, what do you think it's worth? Like, well, what it's worth in time and time on what I spend on materials, mm -hmm. trying to find a balance. I think there's no real key guide to a price chart what we do. Sam, how do you think about that pricing? I, um, because I have been doing this long enough to be able to set up as a vendor, I have an idea of what something should cost in certain markets, right? So like if you're going to a higher end market where you're gonna have a collector, you're gonna have museum buyers, um, those items are expected to come at a certain price point and they associate price point with quality. 
And if you sell something at a lower price point, they're going to look at it like it's cheaper for a reason. So mm -hmm. I understand where I'm selling my stuff versus if I'm going to like set up a little table up here in front of the museum versus a place that like, you know, that's selling yard sale stuff a couple stands down, they're going to be different prices. Um, so I would have maybe different price items at different setups. So something like this, like I would sell this for nothing less than a thousand dollars versus something that's just the rim on a smaller hat at a different venue, I might sell it for $200. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Would you ever sell something like that in a smaller venue for less money? Uh, it depends on who I'm selling it to. So if it's mm -hmm. like to a collector that I know already has several of my pieces, sure, I'll we'll cut you a deal. Mm -hmm. But if it's somebody who's like a family member who I know is going to love and cherish it like yeah. forever and ever, yeah. sure, you know, I'll cut mm -hmm. them a deal even better. Yeah. But if it's somebody I don't know and I don't know how well you're going to take care of my piece and I'm at a, some venue that I think I can sell it at a lower price point, um, I might do that. But otherwise, I know what my standard rate would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the two hundred dollar piece that you mentioned, which would just be the rim, for yeah. example. Yeah, for example. And what would be the range from a sort of lower end market to a higher end market that that would sell? So I might sell that someplace at like the Upper Fall Festival, like our local community event. Versus, I'm juried into this show kind of space. Okay, so you wouldn't even take that to like Santa Fe or something like that. No. Not really. Um, I do take some, like what we call our five and dime, because you're still going to get the local people who aren't going to be able to buy at that price point, right? So yeah. you need to apply your items to a wide variety of people. So I still have some smaller items there. So but... it's still, and would it, would it still be at $200, whether it's? No, I, I will take some things to Santa Fe that are only like 50 bucks. Okay. So you really do need some small items to fill your space, but also you're taking your larger ticket items to those bigger shows. Interesting. And Santa Fe is jury, right? Yes. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah, actually, we should know next week. Oh, oh good. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do they make those decisions? Um, it's you have to apply, uh, submit pictures of your work for each classification that you're going for, and then um, everybody's ranked on a scale. And then people who get top rank get in. And then people who are kind of like almost there are waitlisted. And then some people just straight up said, mm, no. Yeah. How long did it take you? I'm so sorry we're staying. I <laughs> you so much, but how long did it take you to get into the, the market? We actually went, to, well, I'm a member of the Native Roots Artist Guild, which Penny uh -huh. is also a member. Um, we were invited by one of the former directors to go as a co op. Mm -hmm. And to kind of like see what the experience was about. And that was probably like six. Yeah, I think it was six. Ago, yeah. yeah, six or seven years ago. Yeah, and good. I was able to go with, well, there were like five or six of us who yeah. all went and manned the table, but there was enough of us to be a time to walk around and look at the market. Yeah. And I thought the value of what I was making was comparable to what was offered. So I figured I conned my mom into applying with me and we went as artists and set up and we've done well ever since. Yeah, I was gonna say it was immediately after, mm -hmm. like within a year or two that you kept getting into yeah. the market. Yep. Yeah. So we applied the next year and we've been going ever since. Oh. And last year was our best year ever. It was the first year after COVID that they, you know, opened back up. Prime spot said uh, took our some of our best stuff and best. Gone. yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. So how did you so did you price it differently or? No, I um, I took items that had heavier beadwork and larger items. So I knew I would be able to sell to some of the collectors that have already established. Okay, so those are collectors that have already purchased from you. Yes. And how do you know them? Um, I was invited to do a demo uh, out there by one of the people that we know who used to live in our area. Um, he was actually runs their uh, gift shop in the museum. So they do like a couple days before um, a demo of like what you got going on. So they handpick some artists and a lot of their um, benefactors and collectors that support their museum come through and say, okay, we'll like your stuff, we'll like your stuff. Where's your business card? Where are you located on the market? And they'll come back their market and buy. And then they tell all their little rich buddies, mm -hmm. go buy those from those people. Yeah. And it's around year by year by year. And do you keep in contact with them in some way? Um, I do get emails from them. 
uh, through social media, sometimes some messages. But I will post because they know to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> what you got working on? You bring the market. <laughs> so, so do you collect their information at all? Um, I do. Yes, I do. Like their email, phone yep. numbers, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And do you ever hit them up and say, "Hey, I got something cool coming up"? Uh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> I like to well because like I it takes me a long time to work on something, right? Yeah. So I will post like in progress pictures. Hey, this is what's coming up. Catch me here. Mm -hmm. So they'll get the like the little just like oh we got you know I want to see it in person. Yeah. So that kind of thing, leaving little like cookie crumbs for them to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Any other thoughts, experiences? Is this helpful so far to anyone? Before we leave, for sure. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna run through this real quick, and then and then we'll we'll go from there. I guess. Um, let's see here. So this is how I think about um, how I think about this. Can you see that, Bernadette? I think so. Yes. Okay. So I sort of think about this in, in four steps. And as as you're talking, I was kind of going through this. So there's the I, I look at this as awareness. So how do how are we? Um, how are our customers or people who are buying from us even aware that I, and, and you could kind of categorize this in a, in a few different ways, aware that, aware that this art exists, that, that, you know, just this whole thing exists and, and that, that they might want to, um, they might, <coughs> excuse me, want. And then there's, and then there's like the education piece so as you're talking about you're educating your customers, for example, or your potential customers on, hey, this piece is coming, coming along. How does it work with the um, with the hair that you're making the poofs on there and stuff like that? That might that gives them like an understanding of what you're doing. That's just an, an example, but some sort of education that kind of starts drawing them in. But also it's 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 education for them to understand why they might want to buy it and why it's important to them. And you can use this across like outside of art. I mean, if you're walking down the street and you're hungry and you're at, or you're at a festival and you're hungry, there's like awareness. Oh, there's a hot dog stand. There's education to learn how much it is, um, what's on the menu, that kind of stuff. But um, so I think this is portable to, to other things, but to, to focus on the art that you guys are doing, um, how do we educate the customer as much as possible? Because it really in increases their interest and makes them want to make a decision. So they might say, hey, I want to buy something and I've made the decision to buy something. That's the how do we how do we get them to go from education to making that decision? There's lots of strategies around that. And then the last one is, is of course, they make a purchase. I should add more in here of, of um, or the next one, which is they make another purchase. And, um, and once you're a customer, like and you like that piece, then uh, you might want some more. And I think that's, that's obviously pretty common. Um, so those are sort of the four steps though of walking, th walking through that, um, sort of the education funnel, I guess, of, of, um, of marketing. I'm gonna stop for one second. Does anybody have any like thoughts or experience or where this worked or didn't or anything well with the education part i do tell the people and usually it's been like demoing too mm -hmm. it's like telling them about the black ash tree and the emerald ash borer and how it's devastating our hardwoods here in the in across the territories from yeah all the way to seattle to maine and um so it's an education 
part for them too. So they learn a little bit more about the rarity of the pieces. And like Sam, I have to make mine, like the small basket's gonna start at usually like 50 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. So everything goes up from there um, generally. So I think education is part of that, even with the, even with the cornhouse stalls too. So yeah, when you talk about that, I think, okay, this has a lot of value already. You're getting something that's rare that, that I, that they're I, one of a kind pieces. Yeah. I mean, even Sam's are, I mean, all of those really, I mean, of course, yeah. you're not going to be putting that out as a, another piece. Yeah. In another year. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the rarity of it is what I kind of share with it. Yeah with um, demoing and with explaining what the pieces are. So, but I get like everybody else, I got more than one art too. So I'm going with cornhouse core and baskets. Yeah. So. And I think that's the, what you were saying, Bernadette tells her stories. Like that's, that's education that really draws you in, I think. Any other sort of thoughts on, on this or comments? I think what we do as raised bead workers is so different from other Native American beaters is it's totally different and they don't understand like what it is. So part of what I do and what my mom do or does as we go, you know, more West uh, is we educate them on that. So that's also a part of what we do. You know, being able to share who we are, where we come from, and what makes our beadwork distinct from what you would see out west. So when you go out west, they're not used to this. No, no. Interesting. No, it's totally different. And even like the color schemes, because yeah, we tend to use a lot of brighter colors with flowers and floral and all this other stuff. And you see all like, you know, pottery and turquoise stuff like out there. It's all like yeah. browns and blacks and stuff. And we're like lots of colors. So that always draws people in. Yeah. So, all right, so it, so going to a market that's different than yours is that that sounds pretty valuable. Yes. So then you stick out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, they have the kachina dolls. So and then the cornhouse dolls versus you know they kind of like oh those are different. You know they're pretty. They're you know so yeah. explaining that to them too is another aspect of. Yeah. Do you do, do other people sell your stuff? It's in stores or shops or anything like that. Is that interesting or? That you mean thing? like we wholesale to them so they can sell? Or you mean like this style of stuff? Yeah, I guess if there's a gallery or a, yeah, I guess it would be wholesale in some way. Or like upstairs, like oh yeah, like does anyone just sell? smaller yeah, the, yeah smaller items yeah because yeah. they have a gift store upstairs yeah. and so. Yeah, depending on where, like I've sold to like gas stations in Kitter August that have like the more gift shop set up than some out here. Uh -huh. Like I've sold to Big Indian a couple times, but yeah. they do car shows once a week in the summer. So then they want their customers to be able to purchase one of a kind beadwork. And from my experience, they were the best people to work with because they paid my price they didn't try to chew me down yeah because i know some places do they can't they can't pay your price and make profit yeah yeah, yeah. based on who their customers are yeah. and right. what they're thinking about interesting so it sounds like figuring out the target market is really important like who the who those people are are you guys interested in selling stuff? You said you just make stuff for yeah, the family. I mean, eventually. I mean, I, like I said, I still have the fair, so mm -hmm. I do need to like get better. I mean, I've been doing forever, but I'm not a talker, so mm -hmm. <laughs> like that kind of stuff is what I need to work on. Uh, so this is actually good, like yeah, doing the introduction yeah. over and over. Yeah, and over. <laughs> to the point where yeah. you're sick of it. Yeah, I actually failed my public speaking <laughs> test. I refused to do it. So this is good practice. I agree. Like I need to practice too, and I haven't sold much. Like I've done raffles and like will sell to like family and friends, but I would like to, you know, have the confidence to speak and Big share one, yeah. and. 
Yeah, I do like vendors and shelves. Yeah. I also have four kids. I work full time <laughs> and I'm a full time student right now. So it's my time oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> is very, very small to do anything. It's like, like pulling teeth to get her to work yeah. on stuff with me. I have to lie sometimes. So like, I have a beating class and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go to her house and do something <laughs> yeah. without anyone bothering that's me. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> 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 <You're tomorrow. laughs> okay. Everyone, just take my address. <laughs> We're working on, I have a big circle going here and then we're moving it to my house but we are meeting tomorrow if you want to come over okay, okay. six to eight what did you tell christmas six to eight, eight. Six to eight. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you want to bring the kids and all the kids can go yeah. play i'm gonna bring mine <laughs> so coming tonight is yeah. both a sacrifice and, yeah. a, and a break yeah. <laughs> yeah so thank you um all right so there's there's just a couple uh, the last sort of, I guess, phase two of what I have to think about is these are the, <coughs> excuse me, these are the four things that I would recommend thinking about tonight and then, um, and then taking, taking it home with you. And I'm going to go through each of these four um, just for a couple minutes. And we'll just keep this, this conversation is amazing, in my opinion. So hopefully everybody's getting stuff out of it. Um, the goals, I kind of sort of mentioned it the, earlier. What are, what are your goals with, with your business, really? And, and where do you want to take it? And I think you could think about that longer term. But also, I think it would make sense to think about it short term. So maybe over the the rest of this year, for example, um, what what goals do you have? Like, what do you, what do you want to get to? The target audience. Um, I think Sam did a good job of sort of explaining the difference in target audience and why that's important. Um, tactics. To me, uh, at the end of the day, we just have to roll up our sleeves and do it. So that's uh, um, that's important. And I have just a few of them, but there's a million ways to do this. And, and we'll talk through that. And lastly is an execution plan. So I guess my hope is, is that I can, you know, just help in any way to get to that plan to say, hey, this is what I'm gonna do. And then and do it. So to dig into each of the four, um, I already kind of said this, but what do you want to accomplish and when? Those are those are really the the important pieces, and it, it's totally personal um, on what what you want to do, um, and how fast. Really, some people have four kids and all this stuff, and that's where we're at in our lives. Right? So it it it's good. Um, and so, and so that's that's on the goal side. So the target audience, I think, is is really important. That I think writing down and really kind of um, telling who your perfect like customer is. And based on this conversation, I think it might be different. You might have a bunch of different ones. So if you're selling at the Cattaraugus County Fair. There's a specific target audience that um, that we should that we should create. Who are the people with your experience, for example, who is buying from you, and what what do they like? Broad strokes, like what do they look like? What are their sort of demographics? Um, that kind of thing. What are are they male? Are they female? Do they have kids? Do they have you know, what kind of jobs do they have? That kind of thing will give you an idea maybe of, okay, that's where we are at the Kettergers County Fair and that's working. So let's go and find other opportunities that are like that, for example, that we'll use later on in, in the tactics. So that's why we want to know who we're, who we're targeting. If you're going to Santa Fe, who are the people that, that you're targeting at Santa Fe? And in that case, you said, we're going to bring $50 things. So they see the $2,000 item and they know that they can get a ton of value by buying your $50 item, for example, and there's sort of two different potentially 
personas or two different targets. Any thoughts on this? Or... That's interesting because I've never really thought about like who the best buyers are for my stuff. And like just thinking about, I know exactly what age they are, what gender they are, so what kind of like. Yeah. Can you share? Yeah. yeah, sure. So like they're <laughs> over 50, um, retired, um, starting their own collection. Uh, usually have a husband who's very wealthy and said, okay, it doesn't even matter what that costs. Here's my book. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> to sell or do the buy? Yeah. 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 So knowing that, there might be ways where if you go next time that you're thinking about it in marketing to them in some way. Um, because the truth is, is they're, at, they're looking for you. So you're doing them a favor if you're finding them specifically faster. That, that's my, my take on it. Do you have No, I've got very mixed reviews about people who have yeah. set up there. Uh -huh. um, so we've not done it. We had talked about going just to look at the market itself first uh -huh. and deciding whether that was good for us. Um, so then where are we? So tactics. All right. So I wrote down a few tactics. Obviously there's events and there's a million different versions of events that, um, that I think that I, I would encourage you to say, these are the types of events that I want to, that I want to go to and, and be at. Um, there's obviously social media marketing, webs website. I think email newsletters are, um, are one of the most effective ways of marketing still um, because you have your audience and your, your, it's, you're really trying to get like high open rates. So then there's content in there or whatever, but everybody has email. They're all, and not well, most people have email and, and most are clicking on it. Um, if, especially if you can provide valuable, um, valuable emails. So um, partnerships, that might be selling upstairs. It might be working together on something. There's a lot of different approaches to partnerships. Um, I think one of the reasons that I was thinking, hey, do you have anybody that sells your stuff? If you're, if they're selling your stuff in a, in a um, place out west, or maybe you there's another artist out west, and you guys sell each other's stuff, partner or something like that. When you're here and they're there, and maybe there's relationships like that that can happen because they're gonna stick out here and you're gonna stick out there, like maybe. Um, if you have the same target customer, then, then that might, that, that, that might be some opportunities. Um, there's, so PR and content marketing. So PR, for example, would be, um, some newspaper articles about this program and talking about each of your, um, what, what you guys are doing. Believe, got to make that happen. Actually, yeah, yeah that's what I'm just, that is written <laughs> into the grant um, is that each of y'all will do something <laughs> for the museum, um, a demonstration or a tour or talking about whatever you do. Um, more talking. Yeah. <laughs> or like a written press release or, yeah, or written, something or just an article and yeah. say the whatever the oh the only times herald or something what's the local sell my good press yeah. Selling, yeah. Definitely like selling yeah the further you can get it the better and a way to a way to buy i so i i think one of the things that i didn't write in here but that is that is important is as you educate, 
Um, and you kind of already said it, you want a website so people can know where you're going and where you're going to be. So that is what the important part is, how do they buy? So once they, you're starting to educate them, say it's on social media or however they're starting to find out, if they see the article in the newspaper, um, how, where do they go to buy, to buy your stuff? And I think there's different, there's a lot of different approaches, but making sure that there's always a way to figure out how to, how to do that. Um, yeah, we had important. the uh, Roots to Art uh, program through Olean. We were at different locations and we were set up doing our demonstration or selling and or selling, right? Mm -hmm. So they made a key and you could visit the artists in their studios or at their, at the, at a venue, which a couple of us were here a couple of years ago before all this went down. And um, some were at the hotel in the, lab, uh, the back room. And you guys, were you home or? Yeah, we were at home. Somewhere at the other building out there. So I think that's another uh, kind of a thing that we could incorporate, maybe. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's a county wide or something like that. It was like they had all the artists from. That's on one day or weekend? A or weekend. Something? Yeah. yeah. They haven't brought it back around though. As far Who was as in I charge know. of that thing? Uh, Tri County Arts Council. Okay. I used to sit on the board of directors over there. Yeah. So I'll trying to get us recognized yeah. know, in the region. Yeah. It's kind of tough. They are a part of this program, so I'll reach out to them. And there you go. Yeah, I'll work on that. Good. Well, any other, I mean, while we're sitting here, any other ideas on how to get recognized in the region? Or maybe any issues or crumbles? <laughs> I think being able to have a better relationship with some of the uh, galleries in like Buffalo or even mm -hmm. Rochester, even if we did like a tour and say, hey, these are our artists, mm -hmm. why don't we set up a show maybe two years down the road, three years down the road, you know, because the art exhibit schedule is, you know, they all got way out there. Mm -hmm. Messed up. Do you guys, do you guys have a relationship with the K House? Do you know that? No. 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 Where's that at? Buffalo. Buffalo. It's run by Seneca there, right? Yeah. Kimmelberg. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is that like, would that be an example or not really? Yeah. Well, I mean, like his is specifically Native American art. So I think he has a very strong idea of what he wants to put out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but I think if we could do multiple galleries, because we did a, through the Native Arts Arts Guild, we did a show through the Young Center in Buffalo, which yep. was well attended. And that was really nice. It was probably like, Five years ago? Was it was maybe even eight. Yeah. It's been a while. What's it called? Um, the Young Center, CJ Young. Like, but it's still with the J U. -E. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm. We were trying to get into um, that one college, uh, university, weren't we? Bus State. Um, Bus, um, Birchfield. Town. Birchfield. Town. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. Did they do stuff as well? We were part of the commemoration um, ceremonies there in May, which they're still going to have. But um, next year, we're on the roster to be on a show. At the Nature Center. Birchfield at the Nature, Nature Center. Center. Yeah. yeah. At the Nature Center. Sorry. Oh, okay. Is that picking back up with the Artist Guild? Um, we haven't really decided yet. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. We still got members who are interested. Yeah, I applied a couple months ago, I think. I wonder I where your application went. went. To you the post office you. box? I emailed it to you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was me. I dropped the ball then. Sorry, Olivia. <laughs> okay. You're supposed to go to That's college. why I asked. And then when I brought it up before, you were like, yeah, we have a room. Like, we haven't. Yeah. <laughs> this whole thing has been really making everybody a mess. So, yeah. so the Nature Center called us up and says, come back next May, plan on the show. Like so that's May 2022 or 2023. Oh, okay. So they're getting themselves readjusted too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I understand that. So you mentioned like a, 
is that the same you, you mentioned joining like a art collaborative or something oh the guild the neighborhoods artist guild Neighbors is Roots a Roots. guild that we're juried into but it covers multiple genres of art so whether you're public speaking performing that's a usa well this yeah. region it's just this just this area, area. Yeah. is that the same that you're talking about yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah. and that would be trying okay. to promote the art in this and how did how did with the six nations um artwork okay so we had like a directory we had a website um we did shows but then you know we just kind of like felt like you know and that that would then theoretically like that group could then go to these places in buffalo that's what you're saying and say hey we'd have people interested in showcasing so what so is there a like money do, what do you need money interest like all of the above what do we need not, not like the <laughs> pandemic to go away yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also need people who have the time to be able to commit to getting it together to do the legwork to be able to get everybody back going doing shows so with that that like an or like organizational help. yes yeah. yes Sounds like a grant. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, individually, I mean, I think we we try to be each other's cheerleaders too. Yeah. And like say, hey, I know they're looking for a potter, somebody to do this or whatever. So that's that was one part of it too. So okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's keep going. Um, so there's the other people's marketing and newsletters. It's kind of similar to what we're talking about. Physical physical postcards, that kind of thing, um, or um, or maybe getting into catalogs and and whatnot. Of other, in your case, maybe of collectors or maybe. Um, just more physical type stuff that that those are i mean we could list off tactics in the hundreds i think for hours but those are some ideas um lastly is the execution plan so um in my experience the more we can focus and pick um what is the what are the tactics that you want to use so for example keep picking on you, but um, Instagram and Facebook, but not Twitter, for example. Um, what are, and then, and then what does that mean to be on Instagram? And having a, I mean, we could, we could talk about this for a year, but um, trying to keep it simple and saying, hey, I want to do two posts a week or something. And Consistency, I think, is is important. Whatever whatever that is, um, that you decide that 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 you want to do, and then playing and then playing around with with that. If it's an email newsletter, for example, is it once a month? Is it once a quarter? Is it once a week? Every day? Like, um, what do you want to commit to, and and what should that look like? Um, if you want to build a website, should we focus on that and get it done? Um, it's easy to like start and not finish these types of things in my experience. Um, so, uh, think about what you, you want to commit to the time that you have and, and let's, let's do it. Um, so that's really like, that's sort of what I have on the slides. My, my ask and my hope is that we can we can take essentially these these four steps. I'll just go back to this slide here um, and literally write out what are our goals, what are what's our target audience, um, and what are the tactics, and and then lastly create an execution plan based on which tactics that you choose, um, and keeping it as simple as possible for this for the last two I think are is important um get get something going start start 
there depending on where you're at or or continue or or whatever and then uh and then add from there that's kind of my my thoughts what comments or I don't know, opinions or thoughts that do you guys have well i'll tell you <laughs> i did a postcard and okay. i've been doing a postcard for a time it gives a story on the back Gives my photo of the dolls. Gives a little intro piece here. Of course, I did the layout. That's what I do for a living. And then I was doing a little little introduction here because I'm making smaller dolls now, and they're only about that big. So um, I was thinking about a giveaway, like something that I would add or um, put in with those mm -hmm. like you said a marketing scheme so I was gonna I did my dolls at, uh, these sell upstairs actually um, so I was gonna reduce the size so that they can fit in something or like here's your doll and there's a little piece of whatever so I've kind of actually already started thinking about that and that's because I've been in the print industry so i'm going to reduce my my sticker um and i just did a little tiny cord um stock here so these are stickers um it's going to be i'm that's actually just the prototype yeah awesome so i do note cards upstairs okay and so the boys and the girls and um that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so what are you going to do with that? Um, these will be with the dolls that I sell. Okay. So each one will be with, it's just a little information thing. And then so you I'll, buy a doll and you get you that. You get this, yeah. Okay. These are setting out on my table generally. Mm -hmm. And I take it when I do demonstrations. And they story tell, I just read the back of my thing. And that's it. And then we make the dolls. So everybody has a different way to approach it. And that's <laughs> what I do. <laughs> so when they, what's the goal? So the, what would you say the goal is with them taking this? Um, it's almost like when you said do a newsletter or something, mm -hmm. it's like something tangible that they can walk away with in addition to the purchase of the doll. Okay. So. And I get the sticker. I mean, the sticker, if they would to put it like somewhere like on the yeah, phone or something, yeah, yeah. and then someone I'm gonna, else sees it, yep. and they're like, hey, what's that? Hey, where'd you and get that? Like, oh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So my question, I guess my question, I love that. And I would love to buy that, get take the stickers home. My girls would love it. Um, what I think that if if somebody's going to do that i would want i i think that you should try to collect their information yeah i could do that too i was i don't know I, i've never actually like i never take emails or phone numbers unless they're actually ordering something from yeah. me yeah and i don't even have a sheet i know that was like comments or something like that didn't we do that for something i think we talked about figuring out where all of our pieces were i think tony was talking about it so yeah do a, like an overall show of yeah. stuff or something, right? So if they, if, if they, um, if you were on Instagram, you could put your Instagram on there. You could, then they're following you. That's, that's what you do basically, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, there's, you could get their information. Like there, you could also do a, hey, sign up for this and you don't even have to buy anything. And here's our stickers. Like, um and then you could get their email or something um just uh, just some ideas then or their address to send the postcard for next time or right. something like that right um the more the more you, information you have of theirs and you will know that they like your stuff i think that's that's the important part if they go down the to go down the row and they stop at your place they then they're telling you to, in my opinion, they're telling you that this is something that I'm interested in, whether I 
if I buy now, then I, I want to know. Like personally, I'm thinking each each person, as you guys have talked, I'm like, there's a specific situation or person that I want to buy for from you guys for them. And so I want to I want to either be on your mailing list or follow you or something. That's cool. <laughs> so I mean, and, and I'm not alone. Is my point. Is, and Tom's a good person. Now. Yeah, he knows a lot of people. And some of those people have money. So, okay. <laughs> well, let me give you my business. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> That's another thing I think is important too, because we talked about that, is having people develop their own business cards to. How am I going to get a hold of her? Oh, well, mm -hmm. I know her sister or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I know her auntie or whatever. Something like that. Like, I know Sam. Uh, Instagram is pretty popular. Your mom's is too. Yeah. yeah. She features all kinds of stuff that's um, coming up, which is kind of cool. So I keep track of her like that too. <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> so I, I think it's important for on that somewhere on there for you to have in my opinion it would be like your instagram and a qr code i don't even know what those do i'm and, sorry <laughs> <laughs> like really old school <laughs> i know it sounds crazy and like we can set it up for you in 10 seconds two minutes probably but you a qr code and then you print it on a sticker and stick it right on these things and then it would go to your website or your instagram account or something like that mm -hmm. that's kind of very easy way i don't know if you guys have used qr codes or or whatnot but that's pretty common a restaurant, something I read on the menu. yeah yeah, yeah, it <laughs> yeah and it's really it's really pretty simple um now um, i think i think that actually sam did some artwork the painting that you did uh yeah like she could almost make stickers from that painting or even just like a close-up of her flower or she could do a close-up of her turtle and that could be on your business card or something so something that stands out or it's memorable yeah I mean, I'm just saying. I, I just think it's important <laughs> to figure out a way for them to connect to you and you to connect to them. My opinion, the more information you can have, then if you're sitting here and you're like, nobody's buying from me, if you're ever in that situation, you can send an email newsletter out and, and say whatever you want to say. Like, hey, we, we're having a sale or we're maybe not sale, but like maybe, or we're, we, we're doing a show and um, a few pictures of what we're up to or something and that in my experience like that that that's going to drum up some business and then you have their information which they gave you so they are you know they like it and you, if you catch them at the right time then they they buy well i noticed like we set up we split a table at the spring fling a couple weeks ago and i was posting what i was making but i said not available until saturday and I kept nudging. I would post like once a day of what I had ready. And I'd be like, come see me on Saturday at the Spring Fling at the museum. We're here from 10 to four. Yeah. And it drew people to come to the event just because I wouldn't sell them the product until then. <laughs> That's awesome. And how did you do? I left, I left. I thought it was mean. <laughs> What's that? I said I thought it was mean. <laughs> Your stuff, everyone wants it. You keep telling them no. <laughs> and then you but sold I, out. But she's yeah. But I sold all ten keychains that I had. I've walked away from a five hundred dollar in one event, and I would have made more if I had more stuff. Yeah. I only can eat so fast. <laughs> yeah. That's. I mean, that's a good tactic. Sounds like it, it worked. And you drew people to the show, so the organizers love that yeah and i know Make sure you tell them i <laughs> kept sharing like it wasn't just vendors we had the youth smoke damp and we had the hand room special and because i was the food in, food in charge of it i <laughs> made sure it's always be like yeah this food vendor is going to be here so you were in charge of it i was okay not anymore <laughs> <laughs> i understand that <laughs> um 
Yeah, very cool. I'll do that up here trying to come see us at the Indian village at the Erie County Fair. Are there from where we open we have eight yeah yeah and we like look for the turtle hut because our clans are on top yeah yeah and so, so do you try to so the people that came so you sold 10 do you know those 10 do you know they're following you yeah i think i was witness all the sales of one mm -hmm. yeah you did that I think it, once once you sort of know your customer, and if you have a sort of a list, so who if you were going to call someone up and 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 say, "Hey, I've got some stuff." Yeah, I do that sometimes. Um, like, give me the home. Like you. <laughs> there's a lot of value. There's a lot of value to that. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully, like that list starts growing and growing and growing, and then they pass it on. And they like add people. So yes. if it's an email list, for example, like with Innovation Center, I, I do the I do an email list. We have 1,200 people on the email list, and it just keeps growing. And people who are interested in whatever we're doing, and there's people that are interested in exactly what you're doing, obviously, and want to follow you. And and the more you know them, the better it's going to be. Um, you might have somebody call up and all of a sudden they 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 want so much of what you're doing that you're gonna have to raise your prices, right? Um, there's there's lots of things that, like that. So what do you think? Did I you think ask them to write them down their stuff down? I I would love that. <laughs> I so, here here's here's what I think would be the most valuable to all to, to everybody here. It's not it's it's not about me, it's about you guys. So if you guys each took a stab at writing down these four things, um and then and then share them. Then we share them with each other and um, I think that would be beyond more valuable than you think. And so, and it might feel a little bit painful and, <laughs> and vulnerable, but that's, but we're all in this together, right? So, um, then we can learn from each other. What are we writing on our goals for the next of everything on the list? So I, let's see. So I think you should write your goals, your target audience, what tactics you want to use, and then sort of a plan. And maybe, um, so it's it's eight fifteen about. Um, we can do it right now. I I have all night, but or we can come back or whatever you whatever you guys would like. I don't know if you have fully want to. So get more homework. <laughs> I say the teacher in me says they should not leave until they do something. So <laughs> I say like five minutes, do as much as you can. Yeah, like, let's do that. Fill out as and then let's and, and then let's share. share. Yeah. I actually have to leave pretty like I have to actually leave right now. But I just want to say um I really enjoyed this. And one of my challenges actually with all this is um keeping up with inventory and time management. That's my personal challenges. Um, and I just wanted to share what, um, as I was uh, finishing up my schooling, the um, one way to just um, bring in where I've been was I actually had to create my curricular vitae. And that actually made me research my own, um, my own self, where I've been, what, um, um, I've accomplished my accolades, um, some of the uh, awards that I've received. So um, I think that's very important to actually, when you're researching yourself as an artist, <laughs> um, is like writing that down. And every time I go somewhere, I actually, you know, um, continue to add because that 
um, will just help in the education when you are demonstrating or trying to sell yourself or sell your, you know, um, your art. And I think that's, you know, it, it's just basically a summary of your career, your qualifications, your education. So that's really important. And actually that assignment um, last spring took me probably a good like month and a half to really uh, research who I, you know, what I, who I was as an artist. So that's the only thing that I would like to, you know, contrib contribute at this time, but um, I really enjoy this and uh, I hope to get your contact information. Um, everybody be safe traveling home and I will see you at the next workshop. Yeah, good to meet you, Bernadette. See ya. Which is next week on Thursday. Okay, send me an email to remind me. I will, yes. <laughs> okay, good night, everybody. Good night. Should I turn the recording off or leave it on? Just leave it. Want to share? Because there are two other two, yeah, two people that aren't here. Um, so what I usually do is share the recording um, for those people, and then like if anyone else wants to review it again, then they have the opportunity. Perfect. My plan is to. I don't know if Sunny Commission has a. Sunny Media has a YouTube channel, but to like put it on the YouTube channel. They do have a YouTube channel. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I need to contact them. But I'm not responsible for it anymore. <laughs> Smart. <Yeah. laughs> I also have limited space on Zoom. So it's like constant. How long does that take people? I really don't know. <laughs> Well, um, I'm a slow multitasker, so I have all kinds of projects in the process. Mm -hmm. And so when I have like a creative block, I just put aside and do the next one. <laughs> I don't have those happening you, right now. So, so. Do you have anything that's like unfinished for like years? Yeah, I have. Um, so it's really funny. Uh, the same year that I was going to sell this, I did what I call blanks. So I'll get like everything cut out, the pattern done put it on the velvet, get it all ready, mm -hmm. put my design on the back and put it aside. So I just have to start getting the colors for the bees and blah, blah, blah. So I have like a bin of purse blanks. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think from the same year that the purse that's in the collection now, that blue one that's kind oh, yeah. of small, oh, yeah. um, that same year I created probably like 10 purse blanks. Oh, yeah. And I still have five of them in the box. Wow. Wow. We yeah. just did a class up in Tuscola. Um, it was like a little purse. But it was for needle, needle case. Oh yeah, that was my first time doing those. Mm -hmm. I like the needle cases. They're really yeah. pretty shaped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's all kinds of shapes too. Take my kit and yeah. finish it because I have a lot. I but, did it in like one morning. I did it in like four hours because I didn't want to stop. <laughs> That's when you know to be done. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to be done. She's like, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who did that class? Was it Angela's? Anita's. Oh, yeah. okay. Anita did it. Marissa Raffles did it. I know it works. I like the classes. Yeah. I know it's I asked her. I was like, you should do the weekend classes. We'll come out. I know. It's so hard to do anything during the week. Yeah, it was on Wednesdays for a while. All the classes. <laughs> That's tough. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. Well, I'm not too much, but my sidekick has four kids and works full time. And <laughs> Pencil cool. I don't even know how she's here. <laughs> yeah, I know, I gotta go home and do school work. Today. I know, yeah. It's first day Who wants to share first? <laughs> Yay! Go ahead. And then you get to pick the next person. Okay, to share. There you go. <laughs> okay so. I had a hard time because like I said, I don't sell my things, but I was thinking of just the fair. So like what my goal would be for the fair would be um, inventory. I don't have anything right now. So okay. I would work on that. Um, Do you have some ideas 
on like how much inventory or what? Is. Yes. So I for the fair, I do dream catchers and I do beaded barrettes, earrings, bracelets, like all kinds of little things. Like um, so we always say this, but you say it every year. We're gonna we're gonna start working on it because the week before the fair is when I'm like killing myself trying to get stuff done to fill the counter. Yeah. And I'm like, we're this year we're gonna do it and we're gonna just enjoy and people watch and we never do. We're always back there freaking sweatshop. <laughs> but but um yours is even longer. My dream catchers, they sell pretty fast. So I would probably need like I don't know, like 50 just to start so I didn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Um the my target audience is fair goers. So they're not looking to spend a ton of money, but they spend money. So my target audience is usually geared more towards children, just or parents of children, because I mean that's what I am. So I like if I see, oh, this one is a Disney brat, my daughter really wants that. So I would buy it. And I would spend, you know, 30 to 50 dollars depending on what it is. Um, so that would be that. And then um the tactics mm -hmm. probably social media sharing the fears coming up same thing with facebook like hey we're going to be set up and i don't know what my execution plan is yet. so the tactics so that's how i think about it is your tactic is social media and going to fairs yeah so your execution plan to me would say okay what's my goal 50 dream catchers say that was the only goal yeah and uh, when's the fair and then how are you how are you gonna make those like how long does it take to make them so maybe okay. it's 10 weeks five a week or maybe it's five a week for the first eight weeks and then another 50 yeah. <laughs> like in the last two weeks yeah. or whatever you know yeah. like if you know that's what's gonna happen yeah you can sort of plan for it but maybe to, uh, I don't know, just come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. So the, um, and then from a social media standpoint, what, like an execution plan on that. It sounds like you had a, you had one sort of a once a day you were, you were doing a, was it Instagram before oh, the, before, before the spring fling. Yeah. And that was, whether that was a planned out plan or not, um, it was you you were executing some sort of strategy and just having one and then saying okay this is what i should do by the way all the time we make a plan then we don't like it doesn't happen it's okay you just just come that's my like for, forgive <laughs> that's my life too so like give ourselves grace forgive ourselves and then just stand back up and go yeah. right so my my opinion <laughs> All right, that's great. Who else? Here, you, you get to pick. Leora. Okay. <laughs> Good choice. So my goal is to create a routine for project deadlines, like maybe two pieces of beadwork a month or one painting, or like every other month is like painting or drawing. So get a painting done a month and then a drawing done another month. And then write one short story a month because I would also like to be more, um, to share stories of storytelling. And then my target audience is everyone, <laughs> but mostly women and men for my beadwork, 18 to like 70 or whatever, or whatever, whoever's interested in my beadwork. And then um, make my short stories part of it for children. So I can have my children, other people's children involved to listening stories. And then my tactics would be business cards, social media, and a QR code, because I like your idea with the little card that Penny created. And then my execution plan would do, do two posts per week and attend vendors to get my business cards out there and then build customer relations. Okay, that's a lot. So <laughs> um, what is, so the QR code would go to your Instagram? Yeah, my social media. Okay. Yeah. And do you have Instagram or Facebook or what do you have? Yeah, Instagram and Facebook. Okay. And then um, your, 
So your target market, I want to push on that a little bit. More. Yeah, because it's very broad. <laughs> yeah. So everybody, so anybody can walk in and buy that hat, like in any range. But if we pick, you know, a general idea of the easiest way to do this is who's actually buying, buying it. Yeah. And then you say, I know who buys it. Like we've already had a few people say that. Right. So that would be a way to say, okay, this is, you know, it's parents with children who want dream catchers or whatever it is. And you can kind of categorize that. Doesn't mean that the other people aren't going to do it. So I would, I would just encourage you to try to like get specific because it'll help, it'll help your social media posts yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. But that's awesome. Yeah. Any other comments? And Thoughts? Do you plan on doing illustrations with your stories? I would like to. Oh, so like make like a book? Like, like a, yeah, like a small short story book. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That would be awesome. Yeah, my granddad actually has two published stories that are sold upstairs. Oh. And um, yeah, the museum let me read them for spooky season because they're supernatural stories <laughs> of nice. the Seneca Nation or like, you know, Seneca's like traditional stories. So it was like really exciting to be able to read that to the community. And I would like to grow from that and create my own little stories too. So could you like even read one of his stories online maybe? Mm -hmm. Like, a, oh yeah. You know how yeah. the libraries used to put books out and then they'd read yeah. during COVID. Like story time. Yeah, yeah. Like story time. Story time. yeah. The YouTube videos. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Or even doing a uh, coloring page too. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, like that's what one. I was thinking too. Like yeah. an illustration, like a color, yeah. and then you like read the story, like yeah. the small. Yeah, yeah that's, that's about really it with idea. the other, whatever that one's called, the ABC or whatever. Yeah. So there was. Most of the drawings and stuff like that was erased. Maybe it was like Tammy and her illustrations, but yeah, yeah it was an idea. To make like a children's coloring book or something. Yeah, yeah. That's a good definitely. Idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. Similar yeah. to like Wilds, Gunnelio coloring book. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes, yes. And I would like it yeah. to be like bilingual bilingual so it's like Seneca and English yeah so like you can read that to your children and they know like the story and then they also know the Seneca words for it yeah yeah that's cool. yeah, outstanding you could do TikTok stories yeah. and, <laughs> <laughs> and you could them hanging you oh you gotta tune in next time oh, that's for part two <laughs> okay yeah. that's my new activity <laughs> <laughs> TikTok stories. Yes, Cindy and Caden how to make TikToks. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning. I'm kind of like getting into it. And it's so exciting when I get likes and I'm like, okay, I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a great idea. <laughs> okay, I like it. You get to choose who goes next. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll leave you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go. Sure. Um, <laughs> A couple of my goals are now um, to get more, I guess, more legit. Um, I'm working with an artist right now to get a business logo um, so I can like make business cards. And when we're at the fair for 12 days and everyone's like, well, how do I find you beyond Erie County Fair? I just have a card versus just giving them a scrap piece of paper with my phone number. Um, yeah. <laughs> We've talked about like the website, um, nudging her to do it more though with me because I do it more than she does and I have kids and I'm not in college. Um, more shows, I kind of liked doing the Spring Flame because it was just a couple hours. It wasn't 12 days. Mm. I didn't feel pressure to be working for a whole, I mean, I did work for a whole week straight on keychains, but not like everything was gonna be gone before the first weekend. Like it was, I would like to do more one day events. Um, I know we put a bird table for the Mother's Day market, so I was interested to see how that goes and have more than the keychains and 
with that, I kind of learned more about my target audience because um, a, a majority of Allegheny people and we're not from out here, we're from Cattaraugus, but we both live out here now. So it's learning more of what people like out here and what clan, because I did clan keychains and I, my method was, well, we're turtles, so there's, and I know the numbers are higher in turtles. No, that was wrong. <laughs> I needed more birds. I had two hawks and I should have brought like 10 hawks. And from that, I had an order, I think I've done an order of eight hawks now. I need to, to help me evaluate my target audience. So like, I need to have not just animals, I need more birds out here. Um, that and like deer. I had one deer keychain and people kept coming over and asking, oh, you don't have deer. I'm like, I had one and it was first to go. Yeah. Um, and then this one's a new goal that I developed this week. Um, I want to start a scholarship with the school district out here. Um, I had a lot of support in high school when I moved out here. Um, I still have that same support system. I still talk to the art teacher at least once a week. I go visit her all the time. Um, and we've talked about her students and how they feed. She's brought us into the classroom. Like she's letting them learn how to be in art and taking it as a grade. So that's like working into the curriculum. And she said some of her kids have taken it and have like developed their own style and they want to keep doing it. And some of their seniors have used it as a source of income to pay for senior trip and like necessities like prom dresses. And I want to help our local young artists up and coming get kind of a foundation. I know when I first started beading, everything was given to me from my aunt. She gave me all her beads because she was like, oh, I'm not gonna bead. <laughs> I only had two kids at the time. <laughs> so I'm, and I um, actually want to talk to her about it, about how I would select a recipient. Um, kind of want the kids to know they can do it if they're not a scholar athlete and if they're not a high top 20 or whatever. Um, I, was, I wasn't an athlete. I wasn't top 20. Uh, it really looked at me crazy because I was like, I don't really have a plan. I don't want to go to college. I'm like, I'll just get a job and I'll be. And everyone's like, no, that's not a plan. I'm like, watch me, it is. And I just bought my first house and I'm only 22 and I'm on my own. So kind of like pave the way and start a foundation for the kids in our community. Very cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Couldn't yeah. not everyone wants to go get a athletic scholarship or yeah. you know, go to college. Right. There should be another room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I talked to Matt about it yesterday and she's actually gonna help me. Um so I was thinking about how to select the recipient and I didn't want to do like an essay. I didn't apply for scholarships because I didn't want to write an essay. So I was like, you should submit like a portfolio. Maybe our portfolio? Yeah, like okay. show me what you do and the plan. All right, guys, we're going to have to like yep. cut yeah. it on because Joe is here once a week. Okay. He's been okay. here all day since like oh, seven. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, my goal is to make 20,000 this year in nice. sales. What I did pre COVID um, I do now. Uh, target would be to get a hold of some collectors and some museum buyers and say, hey, look at stuff. Uh, and I'm going to do that by creating a website and utilizing social media more consistently. Um, and I need to get on the ball and creating the pieces I need to be able to do that. And having a certain goal per month. Okay. So, so what, 
Okay, so then the next, my next question would be, tell me more about what you, what the website should do and what you, and do you want to sell on it or is it just information or? A little bit of both. I would like to be able to have it as a, a platform to have people come in and say, hey, it's this and this is what she has. This is what she does. You can come in, have her be a researcher in your collection. You can have her come and do demos. You can have her come in and set up and do like a make and take um, or also have a shop within the website where you can buy one of a kind pieces to add to your collection, wearable art. Awesome, okay. Have you thought about building a website before? Yes, I've gone through like different apps that let you build a website, but they're techy and not user really user friendly. Like a Wix or a yeah, I think I have them through Wix, but I don't ever use it because I thought it was just like it needs to be something simple, SamanthaJacobsDesigns.com, you know, versus Wix, Samantha slash whatever. Uh, yeah. you know. So just FYI, we have budgeted uh, money for website if you guys wanted. Something. Okay. Cool. Then we can talk about it. Okay. <laughs> right, and, oh, me. Mine is pretty much what Bernadette said was time management. Uh, short term, short term goal would be um, build my inventory. Um, long term would be more shows or events to participate this year because I kind of slacked off with everything. <laughs> I really did. A lot of people had felt that, I think, but some were like taking advantage and really crunching it. And I just was in a funk. So no, um. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to get back on the. So I think the target market would be female, sometimes native, sometimes middle class, sometimes collectors, also basket makers themselves. Um, from what I gather, I, I some men get it. I have seen a couple that will buy something for their daughter or whatever because they're like really interested in the story behind it. Um, this part of it was education. So um, tactics post more on my website. It's a, just a blog mostly for me, and I was doing it once a month, and then I got booted or something happened, so I was missing. So there's a big chunk of time that I hadn't posted at all. Mm -hmm. And so I got to get back on that. Um, and, and Instagram. Um, I do use utilize the nation and the casino or the museum and the casino for um, sales. That's a, actually, that's been my, my, I guess, godsend. I mean, I do the note cards something that's quick and somebody will see it. And, oh, that's cute. I want to pick that up. Um, so you'll see my art up at the casino too. Um, postcards, I was doing that. Um, stickers is what I want to get into next. And then I did do a giveaway, like many notepads with my information and then like an illustration shadowed in the back. And if you came to my table, you pick it up and people like giveaways. They like to pick something up. So I just invested in, you know, a, a whatever, a ream or something. And I took so many with me. And because I didn't want to load all that paper is what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, that kind of went off to the wayside. But then I thought, well, maybe I got to do a new design. Um, and then my execution plan is to make more art <laughs> immediately. <laughs> So I guess it's all in time management is really. That's it. Philippe? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my, my tactic is, or my, my execution plan is to go home and eat. <laughs> <laughs> or that's my goal. Yeah, that's my <laughs> goal right now. So uh, you are all insanely inspiring to me. So thank you for letting me come and learn from you and um i would i would just say a couple things i really want to know i want to see your stuff and i want to connect with you guys and be able to be able to see what you have and your business cards 
<laughs> so I, we're talking about <laughs> I it, I don't think I do, no, no. but if you can, if you maybe send us all an email yeah. at the same time or something like that, um, and and then maybe Philippe, you can, you guys can regroup and decide like what what would be nice, like if, if you if, what the next session should be and <laughs> and whatnot. Have you have one? I don't. Okay. I think I'm. You got another one or no? I don't. Okay, that's all right. Can I just say that for a second? Well, it's your most hair. Oh, nice. That is the tufting. So I, for my business cards, I normally do like one piece that I like the best from the year before for my new yeah. business cards. That's and that I mean. was uh, a bag that was, we did a language video with our elders and uh, they provided language for all the steps for all the different stuff that I did in the bag. And then one of my collectors bought that. Wow. So, that's so it awesome. has my Instagram on there. So I'm like, yeah, that be that's what I got to do is update mine too because I have I use um I use moo.com. Who did you get yours from? This event. This event. Okay. This event's super easy. Like send it to you. Yeah. 